Hey everyone, welcome back to my startup journey. And today I'm gonna be showing you the things I did to try to validate my startup idea and the results we got. And to be honest, the results weren't all good, but I did get a lot of constructive feedback, which I used to actually improve the original idea. And I still strongly believe on the idea, so I'm gonna try to go one step further to try to validate it. And I'll also be showing you the wireframe and some usage examples of the new improved idea. So tell me what you think about it. So yeah, first let me show you the things I did to try to validate the idea. If you haven't seen the other video, the idea is basically a service for developers to facilitate handling images inside your app. And as I showed in the last video, we built a landing page to explain the idea and to try to get some early users to subscribe to our waiting list. And I also built some lead generators to try to lead people to the landing page so that they can subscribe if they want. I'll talk more about each one of them, but first let me show you the results we got. As you can see here, at the time of this recording, we were able to get 108 users to see our landing page. And if we break down where each user came from, we can see that 55 users came from the YouTube channel, from the YouTube video I posted about the startup. The second biggest lead generator is displayed at Direct, which are probably the people who access directly from Discord or Slack, which are a few places that I posted about the startup. I should probably have put some kind of reference like query parameter so that I can see where those direct users came from, but I didn't do that, so it's 37 for all of those places. And the third one was Indie Hackers with 16 users. Indie Hackers is basically a platform where a lot of entrepreneurs gather like a community of entrepreneurs, small and big, but mainly individual people that want to build something and share and collaborate with each other on their experience and results and stuff like that. And my blog is also here, but it's basically just a repost of my Indie Hackers post. And from all that, the number of people who actually subscribed to the waiting list were actually three people, which is something, I guess. And one of them actually marked the checkbox to pay in advance and get some benefits in the service which I think it's nice. I honestly don't know if that's a good result for the idea validation, but I think it's a start. We're gonna see where this is gonna go. Going back to the lead generators, the main one I built besides the YouTube video was the Indie Hackers post, where I kind of explained the idea in more detail to try to get some validations from the comments. And I also posted about the article on MicroConf's Slack channel and Theo's Discord community. MicroConf is a Slack community built by Rob Walling, which is the author of that book I talked on the other video, Start Small, Stay Small. And Theo, if you still don't know who Theo is, he's another tech YouTuber with really great content, and he's all around TypeScript, React, Next.js, and other tech around it. There is a showcase section in his Discord, which is what I use to share the startup idea and to try to get some leads to my landing page. And I also posted in my Twitter, but I don't have enough reach yet, so I believe the results there can be neglected. Okay, let's talk about the feedback we've got, which were kind of mixed. For example, there were people saying that they wouldn't use it because they were already using some kind of headless CMS that already had some image optimization and stuff like that. And while this is true, people using CMS for their content is definitely not the main target that I'm aiming for. There were also people talking about some similar service that already exists for example, Cloudinary, I don't know if that's how you spell it. They are using it and they're happy with it. And this can probably scare off some founders of trying to pursue the idea. But the fact that when I was searching for a similar product to see what was there on the market, I couldn't find a good example of a service that did that. Which means that they're probably not dominating the market here yet. Another thing, the fact that there is another company doing a similar thing and succeeding with it is actually a very good thing because there is money to be made in that market. So that means that I just need to make sure that I build something better for some specific type of target user that I have in mind. And yeah, there were also people who really liked the idea. Some of them actually complained about the JWT stuff because it was making the system sound more intimidating and more complex and maybe a little harder to start. And I have to agree with them on that one. I think that's something we gotta improve on. So let me show you here the reworked idea based on all that feedback that we've got. And the first thing I did here was to niche down. At first, I thought that I was already in a good spot, but after thinking a little more, I think I can niche down to a more specific type of user. So I've decided to start the service aiming for Next.js developers, which is the framework that I'm mostly using in all my projects. 
Actually, the service itself is based on APIs, so virtually it is framework agnostic, which means that you could basically make it work with any framework. But for the start, I will make an official library to make it easy to use with Next.js specifically. Yeah, another thing I did was to make the JWT stuff invisible for the user. I didn't take it out of the project as I think it's very important to have it, but I've decided to make the JWT related features happen under the cover so that the user doesn't need to care about it. So let me show you some examples on how you would actually set up the service and use it on your own project. First, as you can see, you would need to set up some environment variables that would be accessible from the server side of your app. Then you would make an API Next.js file inside the Edge Store folder that would catch all the requests to that path. And inside that file, you would put the general configuration of the service. And in the front end, you would wrap your whole app inside the provider component for the service. If you have used Next Auth before, you probably have seen this setup before. And yeah, after you set up the provider, you could use the hook to get the function and actually upload the images. You would also be able to get the progress of the file so that you can display like a loading or something. And when you want to show the image, you can also use the library to generate the source URL for that image. And there are also options to choose the image size that you're gonna get from the server. All this resize functionality is gonna happen on the edge so that your users can download the image with great performance. And here is what actually will happen when you use each part of the library. When you set up the provider in your front end, it's gonna call an init function to initialize the service. The API is gonna generate a cookie and set it up in your browser. After that, when you want to upload the image, it's gonna send a request to the service API, which is gonna check the cookie and return a signed URL so that you can upload the image directly to S3. And when you wanna show the image on the screen, the image URL is gonna be generated at the front end and the request is gonna be made directly to CloudFront. The Lambda Edge is gonna check the cookie and return the image. And basically that's the skeleton of the idea. But there will also be a dashboard that you can use directly on your browser to set up the projects and see some information. Let me show you a rough wireframe of what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, I've built this in Figma and I've been playing more with Figma, learning new stuff. And I gotta say, this tool is really great. So yeah, when you make your account and you log into the system, you're gonna go to the projects tab. Here you'll be able to see your current projects and start new ones. There is also gonna be a usage tab where you can see how much storage you're using and how much requests are coming and stuff like that. And also on account settings with all that general stuff that all apps have like username, password, email, notifications and other stuff. So yeah, when you enter one of the projects, you're gonna have some tabs related to that project. The files tab, we're gonna have all the folders and files that you have. And you'll also be able to upload new files. I want to make it possible so you can drag and drop the file anywhere on the page. And you're gonna jump to the next page, which is the upload page. Here you can upload many files at the same time. And you're gonna have some useful configurations to resize the images and to rename them and other stuff that I'm still thinking about. And there is also the project settings tab where you're gonna be able to actually get the keys to set up in your project. And you're also gonna be able to set up some other stuff like domains and permissions and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the rough idea that I have right now. And the next step that I'm gonna take to try to validate this idea is to build the actual MVP of the project. And of course, not everything that I just showed you is gonna be on the MVP. The MVP is just gonna contain some core features that would make the service actually valuable. What I'm thinking right now is just one fixed project and maybe you can set it up to public or private so that you can do some permission control on who can upload and who can see your images. And maybe I can put some basic resizing functionality just to test it out. And of course, I want to have some early users to use that MVP so that I can get some feedback and improve the service. And if you're interested in becoming one of the early users to actually help build a valuable system here, then it would be great if you would subscribe for early access on the landing page. I'm gonna be choosing some of those users to actually use it and directly talk with them to get some feedback. So yeah, that's it. Oh, and by the way, I'm thinking on creating a Discord community once I hit 500 subscribers. So yeah, if you're interested and want to make it a reality sooner, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And let me know what you're thinking about the idea on the comments down below. It's always good to have opinions of different people. Yeah, and that will be it for the video. See you next time. Mata ne!